Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Satan Dubé and I like to make videos about programming, math, productivity, and a bunch of other things. Today we're going to be talking about the Fibonacci algorithm, or the Fibonacci numbers, and how you can write, calculate them quickly, programmatically. Now you've probably seen these two examples when you started programming and you were learning about recursion, iteration, and time complexities, and which one is faster, and they're both not fast enough for us. But before we talk about that, let's just get a quick reminder of what the Fibonacci numbers actually are. The nth Fibonacci number is the sum of the n minus first Fibonacci number and the n minus second Fibonacci number. So you have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc, etc, etc. And we want to calculate that. Now naturally, the first thing you saw, the, one of the first things you probably did when you started learning recursion is to calculate this recursively, right? This is a recurrence relation and you can calculate it recursively because you have your base cases right here. So here we have it, the recursive one, the recursive version, you know, you just check for the base cases, otherwise you recurse. And you know, this is a very slow algorithm. Its time complexity is big O of phi of n, um, which is cool, but it's way too slow for us, right? It would struggle very much so with large numbers. Then we have the faster version where you iterate. You store the previous two Fibonacci numbers that you calculated so that you don't have to recurse and you can just iterate normally and you get it done a lot quicker and you end up with big O of n time complexity. But that's still not fast enough for us. Sure it's fast, sure you know you won't really struggle using it anywhere, but it's not fast enough for us. We want to go even faster and there's a really cool way to do that. So let's talk about it. It involves matrices, exponentiation, and exp an exponentiation by squaring. So, oh, that's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to draw. <coughs> so this matrix right here, if you raise it to the nth power, you actually end up getting this matrix. Which, you know, if you think about that, noticing this like just at first right off the bat is just, it's just a very weird thing to think about. Like how, first of all, how does somebody actually derive this in the first place? Second of all, is this even true? If you want to prove it, I encourage you to prove it by induction. Use the base case as n is 1. And then base case is when n equals 1. And then your inductive hypothesis should just focus on just multiplying out this matrix by supposing that, you know, for some k this is true. And then for k plus, and then prove that it's true for k plus 1. If you do that with a little bit of elbow grease, it shouldn't be too difficult to prove. And it's a pretty interesting proof to go through. But what we're interested in is actually implementing this in Python. <clears throat> and now you might be thinking, well, matrix exponentiation is a probably very slow thing to do, and it probably might end up being slower than the iterative method. And that's true if you did matrix ex exponentiation normally, right? If you had really large numbers and you're multiplying matrices with really large numbers, it's going to be slow because you're doing eight different multiplications. But that's not the only way to do exponentiation. There's another way to do exponentiation called exponentiation by squaring, and let's talk about that. I mean, oop, that's not how you delete things. <clears throat> but essentially, for some, you know, you have something, some x, and you want to raise it to the power n. You can actually represent this, and this is straight from Wikipedia, by the way. You can actually represent this as x, x squared, total power n minus 1 over 2. This is if n is even. If n is odd, sorry. This is if n is odd. And if n is even, it's a little bit easier to do. It's just, right, if n is even. Now this, utilizing this, you can actually create a recursive algorithm to find the nth power of something recursively and a lot quicker than normal. <clears throat> Which is a little bit weird to say, right? Um, normally, if you're just dealing with normal numbers, you'd probably just want to go, um, you just want to go um, through normal exponentiation. Um, but this is a lot faster uh, if you're going for matrices. Oops. So, <coughs> A better way to understand this probably would be to look at a code implementation. But before we do that, 
before we implement this and talk a little bit more about this, let's just talk about how we're going to implement matrix uh, multiplication in our program. Whoa, choose my changes. So we could just import NumPy. We could just import NumPy, NumPy and be done with it. Um, but I don't really feel like importing NumPy for something that's, you know, only going to be using matrix multiplication. So we can just write our own uh, matrix multiplication function pretty quickly. You know, you take in two matrices A and B. Um, these are two two by two matrices um, represented as a list. So just a list of four elements. And A, B, C, D are the elements in A, and X, Y, Z, and W are the elements in B. And then you just return uh, a new list, or in this case a tuple, of <coughs> elements. Uh, a times x plus b times z, and that's just the matrix multiplication you would do normally by hand, and you end up with a nice two by two matrix. Now we want to be able to exponentiate this matrix, and exponentiation is hard. But the interesting thing is, if you go back here, um, whenever this loads, oh, I guess it doesn't need, it just says that. So we can actually write x to the n as being equal to x to the 2m the even part times the odd part x times n minus 2 to the m. And the way you do this is through recursion and I'll leave a more in-depth explanation on how this actually works because right now I'm just saying it as fact and I'm not really giving a great explanation for how it works. And I'll leave a more in-depth explanation of how it works down in the description as well as where I got the inspiration for this video from. But let's go work on implementing this. So we want to be able to do um, <coughs> we want to be able to now let's just move this. Let's just move this up. Move this up right here, and we want to be able to implement something that does uh, exponentiation. So we take some matrix A, uh, some matrix A, and we have to raise it to the power n. And there's a few ways that we could do this, um, but let's just uh, actually let's do some matrix A, raise it to the power m. And, oh wait, I actually already wrote the code for this down here. So let's just take a look at this. You see that <coughs> if you have some matrix A and you want to raise it to the power M, a matrix, a two by two matrix raised to the power zero is one, zero, zero, one. Um, and if the power is obviously one, then obviously the matrix you can return is A. Otherwise, uh, you store another matrix A, and this is going back to what we have here. And for some reason it didn't save. I don't know why. Actually, wait, did I delete it? I might have deleted it. But essentially, you're going back um, to what you have here, to the m, and x times n minus m to the over uh, minus 2 to the m. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this, and we're going to break our matrix multiplication into two separate matrix multiplication, uh, our matrix exponentiation into two separate matrix exponentiations, and then multiply them to save on operations. So if we go back. And we store, and we just create another variable b. That's the matrix. N equals two because again we're dealing with squares. And while two is less than the current power, you want to multiply these two matrices together. And just repeatedly square them until you get um, to where n is equal to m. And that's how you do exponentiation by squaring through repeated squaring. And then you just take the remainder of whatever is left. Again, that's going to be the x. That's going to be the uh, x to the power n minus 2 to the m. You have the remainder. You take the remainder of what you have, and then you multiply the remainder. You multiply the remainder, x n minus m over 2. Uh, shouldn't use an x there. But, uh, okay, x times 2 to the m, and this should be 2 to the m as well. You multiply those two together, and then you end up with a very, uh, you end up with a very nice, quick little algorithm to find the nth power of a matrix of a two by two matrix. Obviously, you could try and ge <coughs> generalize this for other matrices, <coughs> but in the meantime, we're just working with two by two matrices. Now, obviously, that's all cool and all, but how do we actually apply this to finding the nth Fibonacci number? So, what we're going to do is just let's just say f1 and we're going to call this um, the matrix that we begin with is 110 and we're going to raise this 
to the nth power. So fast fib, you know, we just take in some n, and all we really have to do is just return the matrix power of am of fn to the n. And that's it. So let's test this out. Fast fib n print fast fib of I don't know. Let's go three. What's the third Fibonacci number? This should be two. It should say two. <coughs> wow, it uh not stopping is not a good sign. Hmm. See, do we actually break this recursion properly? I think we do. Pretty sure we do. Maybe Replit is just breaking for some reason. Let's just go back and test Replit. If it loads, okay, that's not okay. We're good. We're back. All right. We do print fast fib three, and we get a matrix back. If this is the right matrix, uh, let's see. <coughs> it should be, but we don't actually want to deal. Uh, also, I just noticed that because of the way we wrote this, this is actually going to be returning the fourth uh, Fibonacci number technically, but that's okay. Um, but to change that, we could pretty much just index this and say, well, you want this one. And this will give us the nth Fibonacci number. The zeroth uh, exiting the zeroth position will give us the n plus first Fibonacci number by looking at that matrix that we looked at already. So we just do this, and we get two. And now let's find the three thousandth Fibonacci number. See how long that takes us. Very quick. One of the thirty thousandth Fibonacci number. Also very quick. If you tried finding it with the very slow Fibonacci uh, algorithm that we already wrote, even finding the three hundredth number would probably take a while. Let's just comment this out and run this again. Stop. Run. You can see that it's struggling to find the 300th Fibonacci number with the very slow algorithm we have here. Right? But maybe that's unfair. Maybe you should compare it to the iterative version. You know, it finds 300 quickly. It finds 2,000 quickly. And it finds 30,000 quickly as well. And you know, you could just keep going. And then, you know, it started going a little bit slower. And I think the same thing might happen with our fast algorithm. But still a little bit quicker. And we just, you know, we can just keep going. It'll eventually start to take her down once you hit the, what is this number? Three million. Three million, it slows down, um, which is to be expected. But it does print it up. And that's a very, it's a very large number. That's a lot of digits. But this is the 3 millionth Fibonacci number, and you're able to calculate that quickly. Now, I know this video wasn't too heavy on the math explanation, and I'll leave a lot of resources linked in the description for you to figure it out. <laughs> but I think this is super cool, and I encourage you to explore more of it. If you want to see more videos like these, comment down in the description. If you want to leave suggestions on how this video was, join my Discord down in the description below, and leave suggestions in the suggestions channel. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment and telling you what to do next. Of course, follow me on my socials if you want to keep up to date. And otherwise, have a great day, and I hope you have a good one.